on number 10, discussion, take possible action on the request from Detective Ronald Goodmaster. Uh, in our packets, we all have a letter dated November 7, 2012. Uh, it says, Dear First Selectman Miller, as you are likely aware, I represented Detective Sergeant Ronald Goodmaster. As you are further aware, upon attaining the age of 65 on March 13, 2013, Sergeant Goodmaster's tenure with the Seymour Police Department will be approximately one year and four months short of the 25-year service requirement of the Connecticut Municipal Employees Retirement Kerms Plan. In view of this and the existing manpower shortage of the department, Sergeant Goodmaster respectfully requests that the Board of Selectmen extend Sergeant Goodmaster's service as a detective sergeant to allow him to attain a full 25 years of service. The interests of the citizens of Seymour will be served by this request. Please consider this letter to be a formal request to add this matter to the agenda for the meeting of the Board of Selectmen to be held on December 4, 2012. Thank you very much for your kind attention to this important matter. Sincerely, William S. Palmieri, um, who is an attorney at law in New Haven. So at this point, then, um, I will turn it over. I don't know if Attorney Palmieri or Detective Sergeant who is going to speak, but I'd like to go ahead and... Good evening, Mr. First Selectman, honorable members of this board. Thought we'd have the benefit of the table, but I can do this standing up. I'm used you to can that. certainly put it down if you need to. Thank you. Um, obviously, as we all know, I'm here on behalf of Detective Sergeant Ronald Goodmaster. <coughs> and Ron has been a member of the Seymour Police Department for 23 years. He was sworn in 1989. And in that period of time, he's given what for many is a lifetime of service. And what we are here today requesting is a small extension of that time for Ron to continue doing his very good work that he has done as a detective sergeant, that he's led the detective bureau uh, in an excellent manner, uh, is recognized both by members of the department and other members. And that without going into too great detail, I'd just like to go over a, a few bits of um, Ron's history, and in 2006, um, Ron, as Detective Sergeant from then Chief um, Metzler, received a letter of appreciation for work that he did in connection with bank robberies in the town. Um, in bringing it forward to more to the present, because what we're talking about is extending this valuable public servant's public service by a brief period of time. We're bringing it forward to April 27, 2011, Detective Sergeant Ronald Goodmaster, again from Chief Metzler, received a commendation for his work regarding solving a crime of theft with equipment in the area, from the area here, ranging um, between fifty dollars and $100,000. Ron's work in September of 2011, also in the very recent past, again has led to a department awarded citation for accomplishment of uh, both not only Ron himself but his entire detective unit for work that they did in um, helping a suicidal male who had barricaded himself into an apartment. These are things that are probably in everyone's memory and it's thanks to Ron's work and success at that work that uh, they aren't remembered as um, tragedies that they're remembered as successes. Uh, in December of 2011, once again, um, a unit citation was awarded to Ron and to his unit for his work in responding to an emergency burglary call. And this is just a small example of what Ronald Goodmaster has given to the people and to the town of Seymour and to his work as a police officer. <coughs> what he is asking at this point is that he be able to continue that work. Now, I don't think there would be any um, contrary uh, suggestion that Ron is capable, as we've heard some of his recent recognition, that he is physically capable to do the job. As I said to Ron earlier today, you're probably in better shape than I am, Ron, and you're a number of years older than I am. <coughs> and I believe that. I think Ron 
is doing a job that he's capable of doing and capable of continuing to do. And as you know, we're asking for him to reach the 25-year mark. That's about a year and four months from now. Uh, we're not asking for an open-ended let Ron be here until, you know, cobwebs grow on him. And no cobwebs grow on this gentleman. He's absolutely up to date on all of his training. He has had a physical along with every other member of the department in the past two years, and he passed all of that. He leads his, his bureau within the department with dignity and with success. All of those reasons should be sufficient to grant this extension to Ron. Um, I think I would be remiss in not addressing another aspect of this. As we all know, and it's something that, that we know about and I think I should talk about it, we know that Ron made application to the Board of Police, uh, to the, to the Board of Police Commissioners for this extension in the past, um, in the recent past, for this very extension that we're here discussing today, and that the Board of Police Commissioners granted that extension. Now, uh, uh, this, this honorable, uh, this honorable uh, select board has good counsel, and counsel has given some advice that, that uh, has made, that I've been made aware of, um, regarding where jurisdiction lies in making the decision whether to continue Ron on in his good works and to continue allowing Ron to help the people of Seymour, or not to make that decision. Now, there is a, there's um, an opinion that council has conveyed to this board that it's a statutory question and the, the question resides in this board. I've done a great deal of intensive research on this and the Connecticut state law says that a legislative body can delegate its duties to a board, such as a police commission, a board, a commission, or an officer. Delegable duties can be delegated to a commission from a legislative board. Uh, that's been done in this case, not only in the case of Ron Goodmaster, but in the case of no fewer than uh, three previous decisions that have been made by the board of police commissioners to, to do, to extend the service of officers who were in exactly the position that Ron was. That he was asked that these officers approached the board of police commissioners and said, may my service be extended. Um, just for, so that I'm not speaking in generalities, um, a Lieutenant Fox was granted such an extension um, on or about December 22nd, 2005 uh, by the, by the um, board of police commissioners and um, in 2000, 2009, uh, there was another <coughs> gentleman whose name is, uh, uh, Officer Martin, in, or excuse me, 2006, uh, Officer Martin's extension was granted. And I know of other, so my point here is that this authority that rests in the Board of Police Commission has been exercised in this case already, and they've already decided to grant Ron the extension. The authority rests with the Police Commission is beyond dispute because they've made at least two other decisions to allow, and one other decision that I'm aware of to disallow the extension of an officer seeking the, that extension. So, oh, I'm dropping all the commendations. But while um, <coughs> counsel is right that such an authority rests in the legislative board, that doesn't take into account that Connecticut law allows such authority to be delegated, nor does it take into account the fact that Seymour has delegated that authority to the, to the, the police commission, and that with that delegated authority, they've already made the decision. So it is with all due respect that we're here presenting our arguments to this board, because that's what I think that we need to do to show our proper respect, but obviously it's our position and assertion that we've already had this decision made through the proper board that's already been delegated that authority as history and the law has shown. Um, if one looks at what the city, what the citizens of Seymour are going to gain here, 
they're going to gain a person who's doing the job and doing it well, who's in place right now. There's no physical, mental, disciplinary, or other reason to take Ron Goodmaster out of the position that he's in and try to get someone else in there. And there's no fiscal reason because the the amount that's paid in this position is the union. It's it's decided by the contract. So there's nothing to be gained and the world to be lost by not granting Ron Goodmaster this brief extension. So I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Um, Brian, do you have any comments on the delegated power to the Board of Police Commissioners? Uh, yes, I met your first selectman. The authority does not rest in the Police Commission. Uh, Connecticut General Statutes, Section 7430, is, is crystal clear and unequivocal. It rests in the legislative body. You are the legislative body of this town. Uh, you have not delegated uh, this power to the Police Commission, which would require an affirmative action by this board. While the Police Commission may have chosen to do something on their own prerogative, that does not constitute a delegation of authority to them by you, the legislative body. So it's this body that has the authority and the sole authority in the town of Seymour to make that, that to affirmatively vote on this item, should you choose. Okay. I may briefly respond, and it's a habit from court with the indulgence of it. Um, I'll give you a little latitude. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> First thing we do is kill all the lawyers, right? Uh, I've looked, like I said, I, I've done a broader <coughs> ranging research on this than merely reading the language of the statute. Um, what I've done is I've looked into Connecticut law going back to 1936, which indicates clearly that in that case it was police powers can be delegated to a commissioner, in that case with commissioner of motor vehicles. Um, I've also looked into the specific language of delegation of such a legislative duties from a legislative board to a commission. And the, the law requires that there has to be a specific uh, guideline, a specific um, set of regulations set out so that the commissioners that make decisions like this are not adrift. Now we know that they have done it at least three times in the past. But we also know that the charter um, specifically, the town charter, specifically says that um, the power of the commissioners uh, in, the, uh, in the charter says that um, they uh, shall have the um, responsibility, and I want to cut to the, cut to the specific chase here, um, that they are um, responsible for, I want to get to that exact language. That um, they are responsible for um, hiring all of, for all appointments in the police department among other language, um, and they're also regarding um, responsible for the rules and regulations concerning department personnel, fixing the compensation of all officers, supervisors, and employees. Um, so it is with the charter of Seymour that says that the Board of Police Commissioners are responsible for the management, supervision, maintenance, and personnel decisions related to the um, are those the specific parts. words or are you paraphrasing? Yep. No, I want to read some Please specific read specific words. absolutely. Except if otherwise provided, the board shall appoint all officers and other personnel in positions and grades established by the board, mm -hmm. giving consideration to the police experience, health and general qualifications of the candidates. So the, the charter of our, of Seymour, says that it's the board that shall, not may or might,